What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing OD. In today's video, I decided to take a little break from editing to go cast for some muskie. I'm just gonna be shore fishing solo today. So I'm gonna try to get on a muskie today. It's perfect conditions. It's pretty calm, overcast day. It's looking really good for some muskie. And at this time of year, I've always had success fishing from shore. So I'm gonna be grabbing all my gear, heading down to the spot and try to catch a muskie. But there's one thing that I noticed upon arriving at this spot, and that is that the water is the absolute lowest that I've ever seen it. So I hope that doesn't affect the fishing too much, but I'm really excited to get fishing. So I'm gonna head down to the lake and try to get on a muskie for you guys. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so this is all I brought with me. I brought two boxes with some plastic, some top water, some cranks, some different things. I brought my drifter tackle net and I got my two Shimano rod and reels ready to go. I'm gonna be putting this camera on a tripod and I'm gonna be running the GoPro pretty much the whole time. All right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do, well, first thing that anybody should do when going musky fishing, whether solo with a person, is extend your net, have your net ready, because you never know when it's gonna happen and you never know how long you're gonna have that fish on for. So ideally, you would just get the net ready. And right now I have a bait stuck in it, because I'm a genius. Downside of fishing, oh my God. Downside of fishing solo, so you have to do all this stuff by yourself. All right, hooks out, put this back. Let's have this net ready down by the water. Just like that, she's ready. Oh, I forgot my polarized glasses in the car. Pro tip, always wear polarized glasses so you can see follows. Oh, I forgot mine in the car, I'm not gonna get them though. All right, so this is my plastics rod that I have that I'm about to get rigged up. I'm gonna be putting on a bulldog. It's really shallow, so I'm probably gonna get stuck, but I'm gonna have it on just in case because this is my plastics rod. This is for my big baits, big er baits, I should say. And that's just your classic Magnum black and orange bulldog. I'm gonna put that on there in case I wanna use that. And I think I'm gonna be starting off with the classic nine inch shallow invader. In this area, this bait has always, always done the trick for me. So I'm gonna be starting with that if they don't hit this. I'm gonna have to start really thinking outside of the box, experimenting with either some bucktails, some spinner baits, top water. I don't know, I got so much stuff with me, beavers, glides. I'm gonna have to experiment. So I'm gonna be grabbing the shallow invader to start. I'm gonna fan cast this entire area with it. And then uh, if I get nothing on it, I'm gonna switch. All right guys, I guess we're gonna simply get fishing here. Wow, the fact that the water's this low means I could actually figure eight. Crazy. All right, first cast of the day. See how shallow it is over there. First cast, just gonna be doing a medium retrieve. Not too fast, not too slow. If I'm going too fast, I'm definitely gonna hit rocks and get stuck. So I'm just doing a medium retrieve. And like I said, the beauty of the water being this low is I can figure eight when I come in. It's not gonna be a great figure eight, but I can at least do it. The last time I did a musky video from shore, it happened on cast number six. So let's see if this holds up. Cast number six. Guess not. All right, we're gonna experiment a little. I know you guys might be thinking six. Oh, I tripped. I know you guys might be thinking six to seven casts. That's not enough to know if a bait works or not. Well, in a spot that you have confidence that there's some muskies, you know, six, seven casts is all it takes to know that something's not right and that maybe you should switch baits. So I'm gonna try off a spinner bait, see if I can get some distance on it see if maybe they want something a little bit different. And then I'm probably gonna switch to a top water on my next set of casts. Determined musky fishing when you're covering a certain area, like from a boat, let's say, is usually a pass. And you'll say like, oh, I caught my fish on my second pass. Let's just say this is my second. Oh, that felt like a fish, but I think that was a rock. 
Oh, that scared me, my heart stopped. Let's call this my second pass. This is like my second pass and I'm using a different bait. Seeing if maybe I could trigger a different bite. I hit some weeds or something. A lot of the weeds are dying, so these fish are gonna slowly be transitioning onto rocks. The question is, are they here yet or are they not? We will see. This guy I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit faster, it sinks a bit faster, so I don't wanna get it caught on bottom. I'm trying to trigger a reaction strike. I'll probably switch up to a top water soon just to see if maybe they're a bit slow, but they wanna come up and feed. That's always a possibility. I'm gonna send the cast a little bit more to the left, because to the left there's some weeds. See if there's any fish still relating to weeds. Come on, musky, musky. I'm really thinking top water is gonna be the deal. Let's switch. I don't have a top water leader. Ideally for top water, bucktails, spinner baits, I wouldn't be using a fluoro leader. I just find it's too big and clunky. But I lost my uh, my other leader. Question is, do I want to go big top water or little top water? I think I'm gonna go little top water. As much as I want to go big top water, I know my average fish in here is gonna be quite a bit smaller than some other spots. Not to say even. 30 inch or wouldn't hit this top water in comparison to this guy but this guy just seems to get chewed more often a lot of guys are scared to throw top water because they already think that top water is such a tough bite in general and think musky fishing's tough top water's tough that the two wouldn't mix but top water always works i like to retrieve my top waters super slow to really give those fish a chance to look at it and decide if they want to eat it or not already fish like to miss top waters a lot so by slowing it down you're increasing their chances of them hitting it but they still miss it so much so as you can see this is like kind of a uh, whopper plopper style bait this one in particular is by Suic, I think this is called the Night Walker. I could be mistaken. Um, it's caught me a few fish. I wouldn't say a ton, but it's caught me a few fish. This is one of the first musky baits I ever bought too. I was like 14, still have it with me because it's made out of wood. Plastic bait would have been destroyed by now. But yeah, like for these plopping style baits, whatever you want to call them, I just like to retrieve it super slow. I learned that from my buddy, Steven. He's a musky god. And as a result, I've had some encounters with some fish. I just hope if they do hit it, they don't miss it. Because like I said, muskies love to miss top waters. Muskies love to miss all baits in general, but especially top waters. Pretty high pressure day. You could tell because the bubbles, the bubble trail that this bait's making, they're not really staying there they're kind of popping instantly so maybe there's a chance that they won't come up for top water but we'll see all right so i decided to give these fish a little bit of a break my major is at seven o'clock today so i still have like about an hour until my major so i think i'm just gonna leave the spot alone for a little while talk to you guys a bit about my rods my reels kind of just my setups for musky fishing whether i'm shore fishing or from a boat I feel like I should just talk to you guys about that since they're clearly not biting and I know you guys might find it ridiculous the fact that I'm casting one spot over and over again but if the fish are here I would have already caught one by now if not a couple so I'm just going to talk to you guys about my setup now. So my first setup is going to be my less expensive setup which is also my all around setup. I use it more than my other rods and I use it for just about everything whether it's top waters, bucktails, glide baits all that kind of stuff. I don't use it for plastics as much, even though last year this was my only rod, so I used it for plastics, of course. But now this has just been kind of my all around rod. And if I only had one rod to bring everywhere, it would be this one right here. And that rod is the Shimano Compre. This is an eight foot six extra heavy rod. The lure weight is rated between six and 12 ounces. 
and I got that paired up with a Shimano Tranx 400. This is a low gear or a regular gear I should say because this also comes in the HG version with a power handle. I'm actually looking to get my hands on an HG but for now this is what I have to work with and this setup is just awesome. If you're looking for a more budget setup to get into muskie fishing, definitely check out the Compri. Of course, the Tranks is a bit on the higher end side. It's one of the best muskie reels on the market, but you could always go with a Corvallis or a Cardiff 400 size, which would also be a very good entry level muskie setup. And my next setup is my baby. It's by far the best rod that I've ever used. I've tried a ton of different companies in muskie rods. I haven't gone into the specialty rods, like companies that only make musky rods, but I have used some of the bigger name brands and this is by far my favorite. This right here is the Shimano Skix. This is the nine foot X heavy and this thing is a beast. This is what I use for my pounders. This is what I use for my monster medusas. This rod is rated up to 18 ounces. So you could throw anything that is just over a pound, no problem on this and it actually sends it flying again. I got a Tranx 400. This is also a low gear, which I would love to switch to a high gear because when I'm fishing plastics, these fish hit it and I got to reel up so much slack sometimes when they hit it and I have to hit them really hard with a hook set. So I would love to have a 400 HG on this, but for now I have the regular 400 Tranx on here. And this is a pretty expensive setup. I'm not gonna lie guys. I think the Tranx plus the Skix with tax in Canada is probably gonna be over a thousand bucks, but like I said, as far as musky rods go, I've not fished a better rod than this. The sensitivity is unmatched. The flex on it just flings out those baits so well, just casts so beautifully with those heavier baits as well as the small baits. And like I said, this thing picks up vibrations unlike any other rod I've used. My Compri, when I'm reeling in a swim bait, let's say, like a 12 inch Poseidon or a swimming dog or something, I barely feel the tail kick on it, whereas this, it just feels like I'm reeling in a crankbait. That tail kick just feels so aggressive on this. And whenever I get hit, I know right away whether it was a rock, whether I hit some weeds, or if that was a fish that just crushed me. And that's gonna be it for my gear. You know, I could get into baits, I could get into leaders and stuff, but that stuff is pretty straightforward. You want heavy leaders and you wanna use musky baits. A lot of people ask me what bait should I get? And it's really complicated because all musky baits that are designed for musky and even some bass baits and pike baits work really really well and honestly they all catch fish i've never fished a bait that doesn't catch fish obviously you have some that are more suited for certain conditions in certain areas as well as certain parts of the world but the bait you're using isn't going to matter as much as location time of year water temps, all that stuff, all these things that you have to take into consideration when musky fishing. When it comes time to choosing your bait, it's pretty much try different things and you'll find what works. And obviously this is me talking to you newer musky anglers. For you more experienced musky anglers, you know that it can be a lot more complicated than that. But if you're just starting off musky fishing, Grab whatever baits they have at your local tackle store, whether it be here in Quebec, we have Sail, which I actually work at, and that is a great fishing store. And they have a decent selection of musky baits. I won't lie, they don't have everything, but they have your basics. They have your bucktails, they have your top waters. They used to have plastics like the Magnum Bulldogs, which I've caught some nice fish on this. My biggest fish ever on a Magnum Bulldog was 46 and three quarter inches. And this year I broke that PB twice with a 51 and a 47 inch muskie. And those both came off of monster medusas, which like this is a bulldog, it's not the same bait, but picture this bait, but quite a bit bigger. This is, I believe like an 11 or 12 ounce bait. I was throwing a bait that was just over 16 ounces or right around 16 ounces, which caught me my bigger fish. But like I said, your bait choice, don't get too complicated with it. Start off with your buck tails, your top waters, your cranks, you know, stuff like this, like little things like this. I've caught some decent fish on it, never any giants. I caught a 37 and a 39 incher on this bait right here in the same day last year. I actually have a video, I'll link it right up here. But this is just like such a small bait and it's fairly inexpensive. You know, you could fish it for pike, you could catch other species on it, but it works really well for musky too. And especially if you're not yet comfortable with burning big blades or casting big plastics yet. Smaller baits like this work really well. And it's a really good type of bait to get started in musky fishing. So like I was saying, I'm gonna leave this spot alone for a little bit. I'm gonna turn back on the camera once I feel like I should get a line back in the water. But for now, I'm just gonna chill over here, take it easy, enjoy some time off from editing. And hopefully I end up getting a fish
fish tonight for you guys. All right, so we got about half an hour until our major. And what the major is basically, it's just a period throughout the day we have a higher chance at catching a fish. It's based on the salooner tables and it's just an increased feeding period according to everything that I've read. And so far it's been pretty accurate. A lot of times we don't even check our majors and minors throughout the day. We get a fish, we look at the time and then later we check the majors and minors and it just so happens to be in one of them. Uh, often you have two majors and two minors a day. Sometimes you have one of each, sometimes you have two of one and one of the other. It's like a complicated thing, but as musky fishermen, we like to pay attention to it and it just gives us a little extra confidence. So we got about half an hour to our major and I'm gonna be throwing the bigger top water. I don't remember exactly which one this one is. It's either the Fat Bastard or the Cannonball Junior. I don't remember, but I'm gonna hop on my special rock and uh, try to catch a musky. Try not to stare at my dump truck too much. There we go, first cast. I gave it about, I don't know, half an hour break at least. Look at those eyes just staring at you as it comes in. Weather looks like it's about to switch up on us. Looks like we got storm clouds moving in. Huh. All right, last cast for good luck. And I gotta close off this video. As you guys can tell, it's getting dark. And there's a storm about to move in. All right, last cast, let's make it count. Come on, musky. Make my day. Make my day, musky. Come on. Right there. Should happen right there. I should get a blow up. What a nice way to end off the last cast tiny weed and a tangle that's it all right guys well that's it for this video i hope despite not catching anything you still got something out of it for you guys that are looking to get into musky fishing i hope that this helped even a little bit as to clear up some of the confusion but getting skunked is kind of how it goes sometimes in musky fishing and i'm not gonna lie this season has been pretty great so far although i've only landed four muskies i've had encounters with over 15 different muskies that i've either lost upon hook setting that i've lost after hook setting that i've had follow to the boat that i've had blown up on top water and completely miss it i've had a lot of encounters with musky this year and it's been pretty awesome and i hope to get you guys some musky content soon obviously like i said in one of my other videos musky fishermen are very very particular about their spots and kind of filming in general. Most musky fishermen don't like guys like me that film and take pictures so I'm trying to respect them by not blowing up their spot or just areas in general or secrets of the trade we'll say but honestly I'm gonna try to get you guys some musky videos that don't hopefully affect too many other people. As you can see behind me or maybe you can't see it it's about to start storming so I'm gonna get in my car and go home now and if you enjoyed this video go ahead and drop a like comment down below for what you guys want to see in future videos or comment down below what you guys enjoyed about this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here and obviously if you're a returning viewer please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already i hope that train in the background wasn't too annoying for you guys it's gone now but i just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace